live with the lighter side and Jamie Butler. <laughs> Who's had coffee today? <laughs> and Colleen. <laughs> Hi, Lumineers. Thanks for joining us on Facebook. I love it, I love it, I love it. Maitland has been all over this room today, and that's probably why we feel a little perky. <laughs> Maybe it's not the caffeine. A little housekeeping note. December 9th, we have the public channeling at the center. So if you want to see Maitland live, come then. She's going to talk about family, how to handle family in the holidays or for the holidays, and how to incorporate your spirit family for the holidays as well. And then, we, of course, we have... One. Yeah. Sorry, I'm all buzzed up. <laughs> and then in January, the 13th and 20th, we do have the basic mediumship class. And this is where you learn how you perceive information from energy. So whether you're clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsensitive, you're empathic, you kind of figure that out for yourself. And then we talk about your belief system, so you get that all aligned, so everything's working together. Then we have the intermediate class. We actually have one coming up this Friday, but we have one in February. We have one that starts tomorrow, if you want to sign up. It does. It starts tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> it's never late. too late. It's not. We do them on Fridays, Eastern Standard Time, from 10 to noon, but I like to get on a little bit earlier and stay later to kind of answer questions about what's going on with how you're learning and what you're doing with your abilities. And, um, but we have another one intermediate in February, 24th and March 3rd. And the intermediate class is more of, you know, how are you seeing the spirits, um, putting that into action, kind of grooming the four roommates, the mind, body, emotion, and soul, so you can get deeper into it. And then the advanced class in March, the weekend of the 24th, is in Atlanta here at the center. And that's how do you channel, learning how to channel. Like beyond automatic writing, this is like, how do you hear their voices? How do you let that energy move through you? And we do a lot of practicing. So if you're showing up, be ready to work because we need more of you out there. And it's going to be fun. We need more of this <laughs> out there. Yes. Okay, with that said, I'm going to go so that you can enjoy Maitland. And that's it. That's all I have to say. Okay. Hold on to your seats. If you're sensitive, you can feel a shift through the computer, through the phone, or wherever you are. Um, I like it. Maitland has a little bit of a bubbly and kind of revved up energy, and she is big today. That's all I have to say. Big. Okay. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm leaving. I got to itch my eye first. <laughs> Did you ever get that Did weird you itch? you got something in it? It's good. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Colleen. It's good to see you. <laughs> Show up to work to leave. <sighs> it's like I fell in. <laughs> it's like you had to blow some air out, like a poof. I was like a whale. <laughs> like a dolphin. See you then, dolphin. See, you've been reading what I've been writing. I have. I like it a lot. <laughs> this pillow. Finally, we have pillows. Isn't that a nice one? That's something it's kind of for soft. you to like. And there's color okay. here. <laughs> Look. This place is going to be very nice. I'm very oh, excited. I'm it's, it's really coming together. Oh, hi, everybody. And I'm very excited because last time I was here, Mother Mary was here. That was an amazing episode. Lumineers, if you have not seen the episode oh with Danielle God. Gibbons, check it out. It's, yeah, it's, it's recorded, really right? amazing. Yeah. So we can watch it at any time? Yes. It was amazing. It was. I think Mother Mary needs to run for president of the United <laughs> States of America. And speak. That's the kind of woman we need in the office. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. Before Ooh, you're going to let me talk politics? Yeah. I think that all of us would like to hear a little bit of insight. Um, about the recent events. Why is it, I'm very surprised that Hillary won because she got more votes, but he's in office. Because everybody was asking me who was winning, and I knew Hillary was going to win, but then they didn't put her in the office. Well, that's not how things work. You know, they... Well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> they don't go by popular vote. <laughs> popular vote is pretty much what you do everywhere else. It's like majority, everybody raise their hand if they want chocolate milk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yes, we have more chocolate milks than no chocolate milk. We get chocolate milk. 
So it's really confusing. Oh, but what did you want to ask? Well, you know, just give us some insights from your perspective about, you know, what this might mean for our future in this country and and beyond. <laughs> I think a cat will do a better job as a president. Mm -hmm. And with that said, I mean that because with, with his knowledge, Mr. Trump's knowledge, he's going to be more of a puppet than a person who leads. Mm -hmm. So it's the people in power around him that you need to be surrounding with white light and love, especially for the humanitarian tone, because the big vote this time was a vote on hum hum humanity rather than the vote for people's policies and what they're going to do with money. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of good because, you know, sometimes when you have a really bad wound, sometimes it will scab over and heal on the top, but the wound is still festering underneath the skin and it, it gets very bad. Mm -hmm. So bad that you have to manually cut open to let the pus out, to let the wound dry and heal properly. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening with the government is that it, or with, with the United States of America, that it healed over with racism and ideas of separism and um, with between um, genders, men and women. And um, so it scabbed over and it started looking okay, but underneath, like the people who weren't talking and weren't living in the cities and were living in the rural areas still had all the stronger belief systems from the earlier days, from like the, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, all, all from the slaveries and stuff, and, and uh, that, women, uh, that women are subordinate and that men are, it's a patriarchal country when it's not. And I wish there was a word, is there a word for an androgynous um, country? Like you say patriotism and you say matriarchal, is there a word that's like an androgynism? Just people. Oh, people. <laughs> it's a people country. <laughs> It's not I don't a know. Man, I mean, that's that's where I'm coming from. It's not it's a man people. country, and it's not a woman so, country. But we are swinging in the pendulum towards matriarchal leadership because of that the earth needs a lot of healing and caring, and women are more natural at that. There are many men who have natural that are natural at that. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking in general, you know. Um, so, um, what was your question? I can't remember. Oh, I know. You were saying to surround the people, the puppeteers yeah, yeah, yeah. in white light. So with Trump being president, that's like cutting the wound open forcefully so that we mm -hmm. get the rest of the pus out so that we can really start talking to the nation as a whole because he's flushing those people out that normally are not participating within law or government or healing of racism and um, separatism. So now that we have those people out and willing to speak about it, we can start having better conversations about it and have a majority, a true majority, into healing the wound rather than just a surface majority of healing So it's the wound. not just exposing the pus. It's actually going to heal it. Yeah. Because I've, I feel like for me, the way that this has touched me, and because it, it's so fresh, is I feel like it's just exposing the pus. And I know... In time, it will heal. Oh, no. We it's breaking, see what happens it's breaking in the my four heart. Years. It's breaking my heart. Yeah. Jamie's cried every day. I know. I know. I'm like, don't have to cry. You know, it's better to, um, I know there's grief and bereavement and a great loss for some of us. That's how some of us feel. That's not all of us. Remember, I'm not speaking for everybody. But that um, when you feel that way, it's to take that energy and express it, definitely don't hold it in, but then change it into spreading the, the words and the white light that comes out of your mouth with the words of love and equality and to unite, have people stand next to people mm -hmm. and surround that, that energy with the white light everywhere. Can you turn off the fan? It's really loud. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. The other thing I want to say to the Lumineers watching, I know on the computer the screen looks skinny, and I'm not sure why that is happening. Because I'm skinny. Yeah, see, it's, yeah, it's just like... Because it's probably me and my energy, because life <laughs> is very different right now, and so I'm very big. So that's the one thing I wanted to leave with you about... Um, the politics, if you're going to let me talk about it. I still want you guys to remember to learn how to urban camp at least for one week in your home. Even if you're living in a big city, I would really like for you to know how to be off the grid for at least one week in a very easy way.
And if you know those skills, then everything is going to be fine. Because I've mentioned before, it's not about war or anything like that, but it is about losing some electricity. We get to talk about animals. I am so excited. Can we take questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So Maitland is going to answer all of your pet questions. Let's do it. And she's really excited about it. I like it a lot. It, that's that's a thing right there where um, um, we honor everybody's energy and everybody's life force because animals have the right to be honored too because <laughs> they have a soul. Oh. Okay, I have a question. I really like this pillow. I know, it's like a furry animal. <sighs> it's so soft. Okay, I have a question from Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Cassie has a question for you. She says, hi, Maitland. I get the strangest feeling sometimes that my cat Artie knows more than I know him. Have we had another life together? That is absolutely yes. And not just a singular life, but many lives. And not just as animals, but also as people and as other entities as well. The two of you have been aliens together. I just thought that it would be fun to use that word. Uh, multidimensional <laughs> beings. And there's been a lot of communication. But basically, your cat is there to really take care of you. Already. Do you know what's fun? For anybody who's listening and they have a pet, whether it's a bird or a fish or a horse or anything like that, if you want to know how many lives you've had together, do you know what you can do? What? Okay, this sounds kind of silly, but it works. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, like the coins or like a pendulum, a coin has a, a hole in the middle and you can tie a string on it and you can make it swing? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do it with a pendulum <clears throat> as well. And you get a glass and you get a pencil and you tie the string or you put the pendulum on it so the, the pendulum or the coin is hanging in between the glass, it's not touching. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just like in the space of the glass. <laughs> and it's in there. And then you take like your, your cat's bed or cloth or something that belongs to your cat and you put it next to it. And then you ask the pendulum to swing and to hit the glass for how many lives that the two of you have had together. And it will swing and ting, one, ting, two, ting. Or sometimes it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and you're like, none. That's cool. Thank uh, you. I like um I like it when 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 you use a pendulum to measure like distance or time or stuff like that in numbers because there's so many other different ways to use a pendulum, um, but it needs the energy of 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 what belongs to your animal underneath it. So if you're doing a fish or something, you just put it on top of the fish tank. Um, if you're doing a horse, maybe you can get the blanket that you put on the horse mm -hmm. or the bridle or it's just really neat. Okay, so on an object that has to do with the animal. Oh, uh, so that that energy is there. Nice. Because pendulums really work when it's running energy through your body because it's a positive negative force. And like you're the runner of the energy. And so that's what makes it move. So if you just put it in the glass and leave it alone, it really won't do anything unless you're asking questions about the earth. About the earth. Like you could put that on the ground and you could say, is, you know, if there's water under here, how deep is the water? But you have to specify in feet or centimeters or meters or however you measure because then it'll tap the glass and that's how many feet that you'll have to dig or meters that you have to dig to find the water. Cool. All righty. Ready for question number two? Yes, I am. Okay. This is from Shannon Johnson. Hi, Shannon Johnson. My daughter's cat, Finn, has food issues. Fin -fin. He gobbles his food it's up finicky. to the point they put a cup in the center of the bowl to help him slow down. He gobbles all that he can, and then he gets sick and pukes. <laughs> Is there any emotional or spiritual thing going on, or any advice for Finn so that he can enjoy eating? Finn before was, um, he died of starvation. He had many lives that was about the absent and not abundance. Mm. And this is the first or recent life of his that is all about abundance because your daughter gives Finn everything. I mean, love mm. and pets and grooming and kisses mm. and food and anything. So um, what would help is you don't get to give Finn full meals. You give Finn snacky snack meals. Mm. And so if you're not home all day to do that because you got to be, you can get one <laughs> of those machines now where you're like you're at the office and you log into your phone and you're like, beep, beep, and then the machine brrr, turns and it lets a little snacky size out. And so it can turn X amount of times during the day, and you can probably program it where it gives him small amounts of food. So it trains him to slow down, But because if you give it all to him, even if you give it to him with the cup, or they have these things that have spikes in it now where the cats have to get their paws in there to like get the food oh, out to get to it. To make it longer. 
to make it longer. Mm -hmm. He just panicked because he can smell it and he knows he needs to eat it. So it's just like this, oh my God. It's not, well, isn't this fun? (laughs) I'm going to like hunt for this and I'm going to be like a kitty cat. No, he gets really obsessive Mm -hmm. and angry that he can't eat it all at once. So only tiny portions. So at least like a four to six meals in the day and that will slow him down from vomiting and it will train him to eat slower so it's a training process and he'll be fine but if you want to do any healing on him it's letting him know that you acknowledge that he had lives where he didn't have any food and he had to eat quick when he had it but that you promise that you'll continue to feed him after you feed him because he has this idea that you're going to stop doing it and that's sad That's really cool, though, about animals because they don't get a big enough amnesia like people do. And, um, like, when people get here and they have these behaviors, they don't really go, whew, boy, I'm really paralleling it with this other life where I'm not getting any food. I get served once and i got to eat it fast before everybody else gets to it. And um, so we don't understand why we're doing these things. But the the animals, they don't have the amnesia, so they know why they're doing it. And Mm -hmm. they're having that expectation that this life is just like the other life, and that's why they're fighting for it. And so you can just have conversation with them. Just use words. Hmm. Finn the finicky. Okay. Deborah Johnson Ellis. Our dog Lexi is almost 11 and has arthritis. She is on medicine. Is there anything Ow. else we can do for her? Turmeric, 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 turmeric. However you want to say it. But there's only one spelling. <laughs> And you can put it in a pill, and they have it for dogs, and you can put it everywhere, and it's really, really wonderful. And I would serve it with every meal and watch that inflammation go down with zero side effects. No side effects on the liver, the kidneys, or anything like that. And your puppy will feel so much better. It's amazing. Amazing. Really. You can write in a letter to us and just go, oh my God, my 11-year-old dog is like an 8-year-old dog, and I don't get it just from an herb. You know, and it does work better when it's um, paired with pepper, like the salt and pepper, mm-hmm. pepper. And um, like so black can, pepper. Black pepper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can put a little black pepper in it. And if you find that your dog doesn't like to take the pill or doesn't want to eat it on their food, guess what you get to make? Like tuna or chicken with a little turmeric and black pepper or even eggs. Eggs are good. Mm-hmm. That's what Jamie does. That's what Jamie does. And Give away Jamie's with, breakfast with, secrets. With, um, wait a second. With avocado and tomato. <clears throat> Sounds good. I'm hungry. Let's eat. Okay. So we have a question from Bethany Blessing. Hi. Hey, Bethany. Hi, Maylin. Anything Harpo and Seely want to tell me? You know the quality of your question equals the quality of your mm-hmm. answer. So anything that they want to tell you? Hi. <laughs> No, um, they don't need anything. They they know that you're in um, um, transitions, and they know that you have a lot of needs. So if you could just talk that out about how they could help you and serve you, that would be very, very helpful. Just like, hey, you know, if you could just show up and purr on me for a little bit. Do you know the the purr is the same vibration that builds bone mass in human bodies? So like if you have osteoporosis or if you have family members who are having osteoporosis, then you can get them a cat. They even have machines now that vibrate and make sound to mimic a cat purr to rebuild bone after really severe shatters and breaks. What? Yes. And you wear it on your body. And it purr, purr, I can't do it. I, I have never heard of that. Uh, you, I, that's amazing. I promise. <laughs> that's, that's how wonderful animals are. I wish I had the time to look it up to post a link, but I am not an octopus. So I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do all this stuff. So tell them what you want them to do for you. Because they would love to have something to do. Next. Okay, so we have a question from Jen Bailey Streck. Hello, Jen. Hi, Jen. So I never asked a pet question, but I would love to know about our dog, Buddy, if he wants to tell us anything. I feel like he has been with me for a while. We call him Buddy Love because he has so much. Buddy Love. I love it that he does that stare down thing. Because sometimes, most of the times, animals don't really want to look at your eyes because it's a sign of threat. Like, you know, I'm trying to overpower you. And to show love, they won't do that. But they've learned human traits that gazing into the eyes shows a connection and shows love. And that's what Buddy Love does. No, Buddy wants to be, Jen, Buddy wants you to acknowledge that he's a baby too. 
Mm. That he's a baby person. <laughs> and he wants the baby person things. So when it's time for you guys to eat, he wants to eat at the same time. He doesn't want to sit and wait or um, eat earlier. Like, so if you're doing something with family, he wants to do something with family. And that's all he's really asking for because he's got all his beds and he likes all his pillows and he likes being on the furniture. And um, so he just wants to be human. He wants to be human. He wants to be a human part of the family. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're getting in the car, I want to get in the car. So just for more, include him more. And then, Jen, you know how it goes. You, you, get, um, you get the messages straight from the dog, and if not, you can get them straight through your kids. I said it with an S. I said it with an S. With kids? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> okay, you ready for another one? Uh-huh. This is from Lise J. Lacombe Gaudet. Gaudet. Wow. I don't know. This is a French name, and I'm not sure that I pronounced it right. Oh, Gaudet. Um, hello, beautiful Maitland. I have been told that I can communicate with my fur babies. Is this true? It's very true. Um, and the communication is not just like a, oh, I guess I know what you need. You know, like an intuitive spark. We're talking like communication where you're like, oh, I just heard some words in my head. Like, that is a voice. And, but understand that the communication with your animals, it's much faster when you feel it in your heart and you know what you're feeling already. And then there's that other layer that's right on top of it because it can provide a whole bucket of information. And so, yes, you can communicate to them very well. And what's cool is that you can communicate to other people's animals very well. So this could be a very good career choice for you. And I know a lot of people are like, well, I would never do that as a career. That's crazy. And um, it's not being seen as so much crazy anymore, but um, needed. So give it some time and, um, and you'll get it. So did I make it clear? It's heart first and then the words are showing up. You hear words like people words in your head. And you're like, what? That's not cat language. It's not this language. It's not that language. Nope, it's people word language. Next. Okay, so I have a question from Damien Tentorio. Hi, Hi Maitland. How do I get my cat and my dog to get along and be friends? Ha. <laughs> First, apologize to your cat for having a dog. Because your dog's like, what up? I guess anything is good. I'll take it. This is my house, this is my people, this is my cat, this is my place. And the cat is like, no. That's a no. So um, you have to have a language with your cat of, first of all, apologizing. That you haven't advocated for a safe space for the cat. And I bet you're already nodding your head going, yes, I have up high spaces for my cat. But I'm like, you need more. So you definitely need some more. And then um, I love the use of an old screen out of a window or an old screen in door, um, you know, because you can lay them on their side, like not framed on a doorway, but enough to where it's tall enough that the dog is not going to jump over it, but you can see through it. But what's most important is smelling through it. So glass is okay, but it really blocks the nose. And the nose is a big, big thing. Now, um, with the t-shirt that you wear to sleep, and if you don't wear one, please start wearing one. And this goes for anybody else who's having a difficult um, pet relationship, is that the smell off of your body is home. That is your physical home, and that is your scent, and that you are the leader. So when you're done with your shirt, in the morning, put it where the cat sleeps or put it with the animal that's having the most difficult time with the relationship of others. Because then that cat's going to say, I got a special bond with you. It's going to strengthen it just through the smell and the scent alone. And then um, when you have time and you have to schedule time because it's work, you have to exercise your cat. 
A lot of times cats are crotchety and irritable because they didn't get their exercise in and they didn't get it in last week or the week before and we've gone a month and they haven't even panted and they are itching to run free or to do something fun. So if your cat's solely indoors, then please at least once a day play with the cat, laser light or something like that to wear it out. And so once exercise is considered, then you start looking at treats and how you're treating both animals. Because I know you walk a dog and you exercise a dog, that's just what you do, but you don't put a cat on a leash, so you haven't programmed yourself to play with your cat to wear them down, but it's important. So now they've exercised, and now you look at your treats and you say, okay, I'm gonna sit down, but I have a screen right here, and the dog is on one side, and I'm gonna sit with the cat. And you say, listen, this is family, you pet the cat, you give a cat a treat, and you give the dog a treat on the other side. So they can associate food and goodness and love and the smell of each other through the screen. But it's somewhat protective, so they're not getting at each other. And then if you have that routine for a while, then you're gonna find that you'll have a family that will stick together rather than fight together. Too bad we can't do that with people. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that with people? Like um, marriage counseling, you guys aren't getting along, so go exercise and wear yourselves out, and then we're going to have a meal together, but we're going to put a screen in between you as you're having a meal. And you're going to get petted and praised and loved, and you're going to get petted and praised and loved, and then so they could start having conversation about how they're really liking this meal, and, and they like the attention that they're getting. Can you see how it would really work? That would be an interesting technique. <laughs> <laughs> You see him at a restaurant with the screen in front of him. <laughs> kind of sniffing up on the screen. <laughs> okay, ready for the yes. next one? So we have a question from Don Pulpitz. Hi, Don. We had a beautiful shepherd, Nixon, who passed on. We were blessed with another beautiful shepherd, Cato, born the same month we lost Nixon. Could Nixon have planned for Cato to be born for us? I feel as Nixon chose him for us, how do you feel? You're right on the nose. <laughs> I knew what you were going to ask before you asked it. And yes. <laughs> Sometimes when animals feel like they haven't completed everything that they want to do with their human families, they'll go ahead and make sure that they have a place to go so they can cycle back into the family. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same mix. And what's really cool is sometimes, this might sound confusing, but in, in spirit, you can divide your spirit, but you, each piece is still a whole. It's not a part of, and it's not seen as separate. So let's say if I was a cat, and I was living and I was like, mm, I'm not done helping my family, but I'm about to, to end this life. And I'm like, okay, so this is six weeks before I'm gonna end. So up here I divide and I get into a kitten. And I am now about six weeks old into a kitten and this one dies and they pick up a new kitten, but it's me again. <laughs> Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So yes, he that is done and it is beautiful. And you can even use the same name if you want to. He's A-OK -okay with it. <laughs> you don't even have to say number two or junior. <laughs> so I have a question from Bobby Manning. Bobby Manning, hi Bobby. Hello Maitland, my loyal pup Russell had surgery this summer. While healing, we found a tumor slash cancer on his front leg. Only options given was amputation, radiation, or chemo. We chose to go with the natural product healing and Reiki. Is he hurting? I just don't want him to be any pain or suffering while hopefully healing. Is he hurting? No. And Bobby, he will absolutely tell you if he's hurting. He's that verbal of a dog. Um, why won't they do the surgery and remove the tumor? Can you find somebody who would want to do that? And also, Bobby, there are there is a place in Alabama, the veterinarian who is studying the use of CBD oils with animals and cancers, and that you could give your animal CBD to help heal the cancer in the body. And of course, Reiki goes with that, 
and the Reiki needs to be consistent in everyday process and definitely change the words and the feelings that you have around your animal not to like a mm, I'm so sorry that you're struggling and I'm worried about you because no that doesn't heal cancer that feeds cancer so you really have to change your instrument and be like okay are you ready for your treatment today because we're about to kill some more cancer for you let's go and giving the Reiki, so that's the process that happens, and then you can see the successful results. I'm glad you're not choosing the chemo. That would kill too much in mm. the dog's body, and there would be a very, very difficult recovery this time. That would, I don't want to see that. So um, I wanted to share that with you because I know you had that gut instinct, but I wanted to um, give you the, what's it called? The validation. Mm. You ready? Yep. Okay, I have a question from Jen Kramer. Hi, Maitland. I have a cat. The cat's name is Aziel. Aziel. That chews on everything. Any tips for understanding why? Too bad the cat can't chew gum. Wouldn't that be so nice? <laughs> to kind of get that nervous stuff out? Well, so, so I'm just thinking why humans chew gum. Chin. Mm -hmm. So your stuff's not all chewed up. Mm. Um, but there is a, a pacifying quality to chewing. So it's almost like how somebody would rock themselves to sleep. But also it's a sense of not being able to get um, um, what they need. So looking at the items of what's being chewed, it's not just a texture thing, but it's also a mineral thing. And so I would look at mineral supplements and vitamin supplements like a whole, kind of like how people take like complete, what's it called? Centrum complete. <laughs> For, for the bodies where it has minerals and vitamins. And I would start giving that to the cat um, because the cat's looking at something else. But then I would also look at um, 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 edible oils for the kitty and putting them on rubber toys and suggesting that these are the things that the cat chews on while the body finds its balance. There's no teeth issues. It's not about gums. It's not about anything like that. It's about digesting and needing something else in the body. Hmm. You could spend a lot of money and do like blood tests and find that out, but I think it would be much easier if you just did the um, the complete vitamin and mineral. Ding. Okay. Thank you for dinging. <laughs> Can we get a bell? This. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> this question is from Nadine M. Gowdy. We really need some help with some wild rats. They're too smart for live traps. We've asked them to leave, but they won't. What's the lesson for us and them? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Wild rats. Um, lesson for you is boundaries. Because there's other parts in your life that you're letting people in and take from you that you feel like you're being kind to, but you're not. You're, you're enabling them. So it's time to set firmer boundaries with other people and especially at work. With that said, let's look at how to handle the rats without using poison. And there's a thing called smoking, where you can smoke them out. And um, so it's not a pleasant smell, but it's not toxic. And so with the use of the smoke that you can get them out and that you can hopefully seal up where they've come in, if you don't know where that is, take the time to find that out and then use the smoke and then seal them out. And then you could also leave live traps in the house if they're in the house or in the crawl space that you can get to. Once you've sealed up the holes and done the smoking, in case some of them are hungry, then they would go into the live traps to get the food to try to survive. And then you could remove them out of the house then. Setting boundaries because you're enabling people just like you're enabling the rats. Okay. Ding. So this is from Beth. Bethsabi Marin. Bethsabi. I was wondering if my dog Snowy wants a friend. If yes, what kind of friend would he like? A dog, a cat, a pig, etc. <gasps> would you get a pig? 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 Can she write? Is does her dog want a pig? Yes. Well, the dog wants a pet, but see, the pig would be smart enough to entertain Snowy. Mm-hmm. Because Snowy's smart. But when you get another dog, then it's like, a, mm, you're a dog, so am I above you? Am I in between mom and you? Am I the herd? Am I the friend? Am I the mom? Am I this? And, blah, blah, blah. and then the cat, the cat would snuggle and stuff, but the dog wants to play. 
and the pig would play. But you would have to get a small pig. <laughs> like a real small pig. Like one of those uh, miniature pigs. Yeah, sometimes they say they're miniature. But what that are they means called? They only get to be 400 pounds. <laughs> Well, and they're always they're always small when they're piglets, <laughs> <laughs> because the the pig would give things to the dog and play and return a ball and do things like that. So it'd be very fun, and it wouldn't be seen as a competition. Interspecies love thing. I can't wait. If you do get a pig, please let us know how that Let's works for you and your dog. <laughs> oh my God, we would have a Luma pig. I want a shirt. <laughs> I have a shirt with Luma kitties on you it. You do. Luma I'll pigs. wear it next time. Okay, so I have a question. Um, someone has reminded me that Yoga Mama, who helps you know, con- uh, admin the Lumineers page. Yes. She recently has a new kitten, and she feels like you had a big part in that new kitten. And she wants to know, um, you know how you brought them together. By whistling, because I'm the Pied Piper in matchmaking with animals and people. Um, no, that was a journey and a half. It wasn't like kitten born in the next neighborhood, going to drop that cat off to your house. It was finding the right personality and the soul that was incarnating for you. Because it's interesting, when we have domesticated animals that are then taken from their own mothers and given a different species mother, then when you're picking the family like um, that you want to be with, you pick your animal mommy and you pick your human mommy. Animal family, human family. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. So it's like multi-layered. And so um, word of mouth and other people's help and then getting it close to you so that you would see it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely incarnating for you. Oh. I got a whole bunch of <laughs> stories, but but you'll find when when the cat grows up, all the unique personality traits. Um, the cat's very smart, so you can go ahead and start playing fetch and things like that. And the cat definitely wants to travel. If you want to travel with the cat, so there's a kind of a lot of cool things there. But okay, so traveling cats. If have you ever heard of this adventure kitty stuff? Is that the one that rides the motorcycle? Well, they're. I'm not sure about that, but there's a website about adventure kitties, and it's about people that take their kitties camping and hiking. Yes. It's amazing. If there's the one that rides on the motorcycle and loves it, and then when he walks around, the cat lays on his neck. It's, it's so cool. cool. You ready? Yes. Okay, I have a question from Janet Hopkins. Hi, Janet. My dog, Little Bit which I just met a dog named Little Bit the other day. Little Bit. Strange coincidence. Seems to be upset about his back end. Had x-rays and found nothing. Sometimes he acts as if he was lit on fire just for a second. What do you think about that? It's nerve pain. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not structural. It's not bone. But it's um, like a neuropathy from like an overstretched muscle or twinged back that pulled the nerve, and that the nerve has like some frayed ends that it needs to be healed. So you could use herbs and, 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 and remedies that help with rebuilding um, nerves, and you can also do Reiki, and then I would also use like, um, like a, a heating and cooling, you know, to kind of help with some of the, the flare-ups. Hmm. It's like a... It's like a flare up. And that's, it's funny because a little bit will run from the back end. And you can't really run away from your butt, but I think a little bit believes that it's possible. (laughs) (laughs) Your butt's on fire, you might want to get away from it, you know? (laughs) You can also use anti inflammatories, but be careful because sometimes they can hurt the liver and the kidneys. So you can also use um, the turmeric as well and, and reducing some of the inflammation so that the nerve can heal properly. And I would just keep it low key for a little while until it heals. And sometimes it can take over a good month for a nerve to heal properly when it's irritated like that. But it's not an arthritis, it's not in the joint. 
Ding. Okay. I have a question from Susan Russell. She was wondering about her special connection with her horse, Sonny. I love him dearly and wondered if he felt the same way about me and if he is happy with me. I could cry right now. Sunny loves her. To the moon <laughs> and back. I can feel it. Yeah. It is such a soulmate connection. It's crazy. And what's awesome about horses is they think about each other. They're actually a colony creature. They like to be together. So at any time you can bring your scent or your blankie or whatever that you have to Sunny in the stall... That would be very beautiful. And Sunny love, love, loves fresh hay. Like, can't stand it. It's so wonderful. Um, loves the food that you're feeding. That's all beautiful. Um, misses your smell. Thinks of you and wonders where you are. And um, never has any, any dreams or images about leaving you. Because some horses have that. They dream mm -hmm. about being out and away and not like in this kind of life where they're told where to go and where to be and locked down and everything. Mm -hmm. But Sunny's like, whatever you want to do, I'm with you. It's good. Isn't it beautiful? That's a beautiful relationship. There should be a documentary about your love of each other mm. for each other so people can see it firsthand. Ding. Maybe you could send us some pictures. <gasps> Can we post pictures? I'm always about, like, hey, when? just send, email me pictures, paintings, whatever you like. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I like sharing things, too. I was telling Jamie that it's time when, when, when we ask questions or do things to get other people to do it, too, and film it and send it in and so that we can see everybody else oh. in their mini film doing it. Like, um... Um, hugging your pet. Send us a picture of you hugging your pet or a small video of hugging your pet. Can you see everybody? I'm hugging my hamster. I'm hugging my fish tank. Well, then we could put it as part I'm of hugging my the horse. show, too. We could use it like in the clips of the show. Well, Lots oh, of could. ideas coming up. You yep. could, but it's so nice because we're building community of, um, you know, all supporting each other mm -hmm. and supporting interspecies families and supporting... Still concepts that I think Americans think are a little weird or off base. Like, why do you love your horse so much? It's just a horse. There are many more people who have that line of thought than, wow, your horse has a soul mm -hmm. and has a character and is valuable and demands respect. And I can see why you sense your horse loving you and vice versa. So we have more of the other than, than the first. And so um, it would be so nice to start seeing the pictures of how other people do their relationships or do their life with their intuition and their abilities. And then we, we wouldn't feel so alone. I like that idea. Because the president that we have right now in America. Or well, that we're going to have. That we're going to have. Mm -hmm. um, and doesn't understand putting people together. So imagine how he cannot understand putting people and animals together. You know, if he's not advocating for people as a whole, he's not going to be advocating for animals and not advocating for Earth as well. So we have to find the ways that we do it because we do it. Mm -hmm. This place is ours. And we have to make our voices louder. Mm -hmm. I, can make I speak for myself, loud. too. Yep. Got to speak louder, Lumineers. Okay. And so hug more. And hug more. Hashtag hug nation. <laughs> okay, you ready? That was for Shep. It was for Shep. I love, <laughs> I love this guy, Shep. He gives the greatest hugs. And his hashtag hug nation. Oh. Ding. Okay. Uh, Larray Crawford. Hi, Larray. Can you please help me figure out my dog's severe allergies? It's causing him ear infections, and the vet is saying it can cause deafness. I can't seem to fix it. What's the dog's name? I don't think she gives the dog's name. Sherry, can you type in your dog's name, please? Because we're getting past grains. Oh, no, that's not... Larray, type in your dog's name. 
Um, no grains. Don't do the greens. Mm-hmm. Do the high protein and the whole vegetables. And I feel like you're going to have to either make his food or find somebody else who does make food with that. There's also something in the dirt um, outside that gives him an allergy. Mm-hmm. And so right now what I'm seeing from your dog is food-based, no grains, and there is some kind of allergen outside when the, where there's dirt. It's not grass, mm-hmm. and it's not soil, it's not mud, it's not clay, it's dirt. Um, so keeping the ears really clean, like making it a daily thing where you can use a grape seed or even a nice mineral oil, like a baby oil. Um, I would also look at um, sugars and carbs and stuff like that for your dog. Really making the food for him would be better. Did she type back? Um, Okay, Rocco, she says she's doing that with food, it's not working. But it's gotta be that dirt outside. Is someone you, spraying something you can't, or doing something? Um, it's a spray, doing spray. Because um, you can't not tell him to go outside. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So we have to solve it to where he can go outside. Um, it can be a chemical spray that's on the dirt that they think like a fertilizer that it would promote grass growing or something like that and kill bugs or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I would look at what are they spraying in those places. Um, And I think having a mild um, steroid support, like a very low dosage for his weight, lower than what his weight should be, will help him kind of build up the immunities to kind of fight it off while he's in the process of you figuring out what it is. Um, Because we don't need him to go deaf. And it really is itchy. It's Mm. bad itchy. And it's happening in... um, in other places, uh, the inflammation, like <clears throat> in the throat and things like that, if it sounds like there's kind of hacking of phlegm, but there's no phlegm, it's from it's like the same issue. I'm sorry that I don't know the parks and that I don't know the name of the spray. That's okay. Maybe now that you've said it, it will just, it will appear. You know, like it will come to her. I hope that it just appears. And maybe you can get online and research to see if other dogs had reactions of that nature to certain chemical sprays for the yard. Ding. Okay, I had a question about a missing dog that I wanted to ask. Oh, here we go. Sherry Baselli Wilson, my sister's dog went missing last night. Do you know where she is? Um, What's the dog's name and make and model? Okay. Sherry, if you could type in the dog's name it's and the you. make and the model of the dog, yep. <laughs> so we can get a so Maitland can get a better visual and understanding of the dog. And in the meantime, we'll ask another question because I think we're getting we're getting low on time here. So, if, are you, go ahead. Yeah, okay. And then we'll see if we if um, Sherry types back in. So we have a question from Tom Thurber. Hi, Tom. Hi, Maitland. What to do with Abel and his fear of my other cats? Or just how happy is Pee Wee with being tamed and having a home? Pee Wee will adjust. So Pee Wee will find throughout the months that go by more joy and more joy and more happiness. So stick to it. No worries. When you talk about Abel and the other cats, (laughs) attitude, attitude. So is there any kind of separation that you can do, Tom? I know that's kind of difficult sometimes. Or um, if there's any way that you can um, get able to have a place of Abel's... Oh, my tummy's growling. (laughs) That was first time. That's good. (laughs) Um, They have some times where you have the collar, and then you can make the door and the collar sync up, and then the door opens. But if you don't have the right collar, then the door doesn't open. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that would be very good, but for, um, do you know how sometimes people just want to be alone? And no matter how you rehab them, they just want to be alone. That's able. <laughs> I just want to be alone. He's an introvert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just 
get me somewhere where it's just my space. So I might, if you can't do that, maybe find somebody who can. Okay, so Sherry has updated us on the... Yes, okay. make and model. Yuki is the name. The make and model is a chihuahua. Yes. I don't have the age. That's fine. Okay, Yuki chihuahua is missing. It's her sister's dog. Dog on the run. Ding, 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 ding. Dog on the run. <laughs> it's running. Um, but it's safe, it's not hit, it's not hurt, it's not dead, and it's not injured. How's that? So, um, signs please, because dog on the run is now in the care of another person. Mm -hmm. And so you got to find the other person who was in a car, who's not going to be that far away, but definitely going to be looking for whose dog it is, because they don't want to steal the dog, and they don't feel like keeping the dog. And... Yuki has a chip, so that's good. Check in with the chip company or check in with a veterinarian and um, put up signs around the house. In a few days, you'll be reunited. Reunited. I was waiting for that. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> Should I do another one? Reunited. <laughs> I know you like to sing. I like your made-up songs. You like my mate. We're going to do a whole album of made-up Maitland music. <laughs> <laughs> I think of all M's. <laughs> I can make up a song that's, um, here's how you love your Trump, Trump, Trump. Ugh. <laughs> no. Sorry. No. <laughs> that's not how the song goes. Here's how you love your Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> Give them love, 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 right? There you go. Boy, my singing is fantastic this morning. Okay, so we are running low on time. I think I'm going to do one more question. Is that, is that good with you? Okay. So let me see where I'm at. Dog on the run. Oh, we have a second part to Tom's question about... Abel? I was wondering about rehoming him to a single cat family. He'll look around. Oh, Tom, that would be really wonderful. Tom knows his so kitties. Happy. You know, he does. He's the cat whisper. Tom knows the kitties. Yeah, whisper. Okay, we'll, we'll get another question after that. Okay. Um, so we have a question from Des Johnson Taylor. We had a pit bull named Beth that we could not keep. Is she doing okay? She's in another family. Oh, it has another dog. And finally, that dog is bigger and more. I'm going to put you in place, Becky. And it works. <laughs> put you in place. Yeah, because she really wanted somebody big and strong to kind of <clears throat> tell her where to be and what to do. She's, she's a dog of service, not a sweet, like, oh, anything that you would like and do whatever you want to do because that really bothered her. And mm -hmm. so it made like irritable and aggressive and things like that. But if it was a space that the rules were set tight, and then it's perfect. Mm. So Beth is doing great. So Beth is doing good. She is having her learning curve and enjoying it. I love you, Lumineers. We love you, Maitland. Thank you. <laughs> I like being loved. You're very loved. I like that we're going to do the Luma Summit. But I'm still loading that we go to England. We're talking about it. I want to go to England, and then maybe we can do a channel teaching series, and then, like, we can teach it. The We can teach it. Like, I can teach it, and Grace can mm. teach it, and Sai can teach it, and Jolly. The series in England? Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're definitely yeah. talking about I it. I want to go to Australia, too. <laughs> I know. We're talking about all these places. We um, really are. I want to. I there's. I have some Luminaires in Australia that are really good channels, and I like working with them. And I want to thank everybody who has invited me into their home and to help them um, communicate and let me give them messages and let me practice channeling with them because I'm having a very good time, <laughs> and I love it so much. And I love you. And I have to go. 
And I'll see you later, alligator. I'll see you in a while. I'll see you in a while, crocodile. I'll see you soon, baboon. Hasta mañana, iguana. Until then, dolphin. Toodaloo, kangaroo. Are you prompting me? <laughs> Got a swish, jellyfish. <laughs> Cut it loose, saying, mongoose. Bye, bye. We've had so bye, many chameleons. Bye, butterfly. <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> well, we love you. What was Thank the one about the warthog? Got a jog warthog. Got a jog warthog. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> There's, I love them. If I had a big enough arm, I think I would tattoo all of them on my arm. I could do it down here. I'm sure Jamie would love that. I would do it on hers. <laughs> I'd do it on mine. Bye. Bye, sweetie. We'll see you later. Okay. Ooh, when? Um, Real soon. Make it soon. Well, we're going to see you in December for the channeling at the center. It's my show. December 9th. Ooh, it's your show. So yeah. So for sure, but I'm not sure about the next time on the show, but hopefully soon. Bye.